Each day, millions of Americans get up at 6, 7, 8 a.m. in the morning to rush out to work, to rush to their Zoom calls, to get out of bed, to get ready for the hustle and the grind and the grit. And every day they do it again and again and again and again. And the next thing you know, they somewhere burnt out. Because I know you burnt out. You've been telling me in my comments you burnt out. How I know you burnt out? Because I'm burnt out. They told us that the hustle was the only way to go. It was the hustle and the grind and the work, 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 work that was going to take us to the promised land. Kim Kardashian said to the women in business, y'all need to get your lazy butts up and work. I took that personally because I said, you know what? She ain't just talking to the women in business. She talking to the men in business. Let me get myself to work and work harder like I won't already working hard. But you know what I mean? I said, I got to get in. I got to get in gear. I got to step it up to high gear. And you know where that led me? Well, let me tell you about it right now. And this little story right here, trust and believe. Sit tight, grab yourself some tea, a mug of coffee, a, a, a drink or whatever's going to get you through the day and listen to my story. Because let me tell you something, baby. The hustle ain't easy. Can I tell y'all something? Work is the ghetto, okay? Work is the ghetto. Hustling is the ghetto. I'm over all of it. Let me tell you why. And I'm gonna get to, it's a, it's a story here. So it's a story. So I need y'all to follow along with me, okay? Follow along with me to find out why I feel like I might just end up selling pictures of my feet on the internet, okay? So let, first of all, y'all know I'm in real estate school. So number one, that's Tuesdays and Thursday nights from six to 9.30. That's a long time for two months to be, well really maybe two and a half months to be taking this type of class and like, you know, trying to live your regular life. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, as a content creator, I feel like I am working 24 seven sometimes. I got a news channel over here. I do different types of things out in the news, you know, here in DC and stuff like that. And I love it all. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. And I got big plans for going to real estate school, which I'll touch on in a whole nother video. Cause it really kind of stemmed from me trying to buy a house and not really understanding the process. But that's again, another story for a different day. Today's story, I mean, it really just, I, I think, you know, I, 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 selling feet on the internet to me sounds sounds ideal right about now. I was watching, it was I think Real Housewives of, of Miami and Larsa Pippen was talking about selling her feet on the OnlyFans or whatnot. And I thought to myself, if she making all this type of money from OnlyFans, surely I can make enough to pay my bills. You know what I'm saying? And live comfortably. But anyway, let me tell you why working is the ghetto right now for me. It is, it's a little bit of the ghetto and, and I know I am blessed to be able to do what I do, trust and believe, but there is something inside me that is kind of an overachiever and maybe that's the ghetto part of me that I need to get rid of. And I just got finished talking to y'all last week about doing all this self-care. I'm riding on the, um, on, the, on, the, on the elliptical, coming back and taking my baths and I still do those types of things and everything and, and whatnot. But there is still something in me. There is a pattern in me that is that is is based in hustle and, and and overworking culture that I can't I can't get the spirit up off me. And I'm trying. I'm listen. I am trying. I am trying. I told y'all before. I got anxiety too. So all add all these things together, and it's a stress bubble. Okay. But let me tell you where the story begins. So my G needs an oil change okay that's that's how this whole thing is is coming into play today my jeep needs an oil change now i went to the place where i got my jeep because i wanted a jeep that was a hybrid you know what i'm saying that's electric and it take gas so i was like okay found this place it's about an hour away from where i live i was like perfect you know not perfect because it was an hour away but just perfect that i found it anyway 
come time for me to get an oil change last week. So last week I go down there to get my oil change. Now before I even get to that part, I made an appointment online because you know, when you go online to some of these dealerships, you can literally make your service appointment right then and there. So I set my service appointment for 7 a.m. Why? Because I knew I needed to come back and I needed to work. I needed to also get on the road by noon so I could make it down to Virginia to see my dad for his birthday, right? Now his birthday was on Saturday, but I had to get there on Friday. So anyway, that's like a five hour trip. But anyway, I digress. So I set my appointment on Thursday night while I'm in real estate class, mind you, and I set it for 7 a.m. the following morning, meaning I was gonna have to get up at about 5.30 in the morning to get myself ready and together, because you know I gotta hit that snooze button about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, right? I can't help myself, because I'm getting out of class late. Anyway, so I get my butt on the road at like 6.15, and I get there at like 7, about 7.15. You know the guy tell me, he's sitting in the garage. The guy tell me, oh, that system don't even really work. We don't open until 8 a.m. I said, okay, well, I'll wait till 8. He said, well, <laughs> I got two people in front of you, so that's gonna take a while. Oh, and not to mention there's a recall on your vehicle, so it's gonna take about an hour for that inspection, in addition to the hour for the service change, in addition to the hour that if I have to change something on this, it is gonna be an extra hour, so that's about three, four hours total. And the fact of the matter is, if there's a recall, they can't start work on the car and not address the recall and then let me go on about my way. So by the time I would have left there, I would have been late getting on the road because I was trying to get on the road at 12 noon because it was a five hour drive to visit my parents, okay? So I said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna come back. We make an appointment for another Friday, for this Friday, today, okay? Today, I'm actually filming this video after I done left there, so anyway, so go throughout the week, you know, my oil light comes on or whatever, and I'm like, okay, it's, it's, it's really time. It's time to go do this doggone thing. So I get myself up early, but I say first things first, the appointment was at eight, because you know they don't take appointments at seven, because last week they told me that appointment system don't even work, and they don't even start taking appointments until 8 a.m. in the morning. So I ain't even bother with that, because I'd already had my appointment set from the last time I went down there and got gooped. But anyway, so I was like, Oh, okay, let me get on the road. Well, before I say that, I got up at about 5.30, but again, I had to hit that snooze button about three, four, five times, and then I got up and I said, oh my God, you know what? Lately on my news channel, I've been making videos nice and early because it helps me start my day off right, just to kind of get some work out of the way because if I work first, then I can go work out and do a couple of other little things a little bit later. And it's always some news coming out the night before. And I don't like to do news videos at night because I likes to be asleep and I can't now because I'm in this real estate class. So that is not gonna happen. So anyway, I say to myself, okay, let me do a video real quick because I already saw the story. I was able to pull the, the, the information for the video, do some little research and put it all together. Now, by the time I left the house, it was about 7.15, but I noticed I needed some gas, okay? So I had to stop and get some gas, but I'm thinking to myself, it ain't gonna be no problem because I'm first in line at this place. But I realized as I got my gas, it was gonna take me about an hour to get there. So I called a man as I'm on the road and I say, hey man, I'm gonna be a little bit late because I had to stop and get some gas and it was some traffic, okay? So I run into the traffic and whatnot and whoop de whoop and I finally get there at about 8.30 and the man tells me, you know what? You know, you are a little bit late today, but the man on, tel on the telephone said, we'll work you in. This is clearly not the man on the telephone that I'm, that I'm talking to now when I finally get to the place and they open up the garage doors and they let me in. And the guy is like, well, we got two people ahead of you. I was like, two people ahead of me? It is just 8.30. Why would you be booking these appointments so back to back like that? That means that you would have had to book an appointment from like eight o'clock, 8.10, 8.20, if I'm there at 8.30. But guess what y'all, he tells me then, two people called out. One person called out sick and one person had a death in the family. Now God bless that family. Let me tell you something like that. God bless that family, but that won't go help me today, okay? God bless them and I hope that they are able to find peace in the storm. But at the end of the day, I still ain't got my car service. So then you know what he told me? You know what he told me? For my lateness, I was gonna have to wait until about 10.30, 11 o'clock before I can get my car service. So let's review this again. It was gonna take an hour for the service, an hour for the inspection for the recall item, 
and potentially another item if something, another hour if something needed to be replaced during that recall. So again, that would have left me there from 10.30, 11.30 to 12.30, possibly one and not getting back over to this side of town till about two or 2.30 2 in the traffic. I said, no sir, no sir, make me an appointment for next Tuesday. And here's the thing about that whole situation that I came to realize. Because I was so doggone heck bent on getting some work done, okay? Getting some work done because I consider content creation my job and my job is the news and I make these covenants to myself to be the best at what I can do. Now I'm not trying to compete with nobody else. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to compete with myself and be the best self that I can be when I'm doing what I'm doing. But let me tell you something, all of this overachieving, all of this overachieving, it's starting to wear on me. You know what I'm saying? I got the class at night, last until 9.30, so I can't get no work done at night. Then I got to try to get up early, go get this and this done to try to do those life things that you gotta do, like getting your car serviced and whatnot. And the only reason that I go so far out there is because I get a free oil change when I go there. So I'm trying to save me a little bit of money. I could probably go down the street to get the, to the Jiffy Lube if I wanted to, but this oil service comes with, the, comes with my car payment that I paid for when I first got my car. So I'm getting this service and I'm getting it for free. So anyway, that's probably my fault too, because if I wanted to just spend a little extra dough or whatever, I could probably go down the street and get the oil changed, but now they gotta do the recall, so I might as well let them do it all together. So anyway, that's what led me to thinking to myself, I said, you know what, self? If I was selling pictures of my feet on, on, on the OnlyFans or on, on some type of site or something like that, then I could probably avoid having to do all of this work all together, and then I could go get my car, uh, my oil changed anytime I want because I wouldn't be so concerned about making content and whatnot, and the only content that I would need to make is when I'm sitting up in the bathtub taking photos of my feet, okay, and selling them things online. A loss of Pippin told me on the Real Housewives of Miami that, uh, that she was making a, 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 however many thousands and thousands of dollars per month selling the photos of her feet. Now let me tell y'all something. I takes care of my feet. I like to go get a pedicure every every two, three weeks or whatever. But I ain't been to the pedicure place in a minute because last time I did it, and I'm gonna come, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually talk to them today when I go up in there because I'm gonna try to make me an appointment with my regular person. Because last time I had to go to somebody new and I know they know, they she was new and they knew she was new and didn't know what she was doing um, because they let her work on my feet. But the lady that was doing the appointments, she kept on peeping back and forth and back and forth and back there looking at her while she was doing my feet. And that girl was cutting up my feet. She cut up my feet something fierce. So I don't even know if I can sell them no more. So now I got to try to go back over here to the pedicure place. I got to lay them out one good time, go to my regular lady so she could be gentle with my feet. So hopefully get my feet back to normal or whatever. And I better not have no fungus either because let me tell you something. If this person stops me from getting into my new business venture of selling my feet online, I'm going to be real mad. Okay. And that's just, and see, this just goes to what I was saying earlier, all this hustling. I'm still trying to hustle. I'm trying to sell my feet pictures too. I gotta stop, I, it's me, I am the problem. I have got a pattern here that I need to stop, okay? And I am telling you guys this, I'm being transparent in this video because I want y'all to know the, the thought processes that go through my mind and why I am the way that I am and why it is I am the problem, it is me. It is me, I am the issue, I'm the issue. Okay, so now that we got that figured out, I'm gonna go figure out what I need to do about my life. But I just had to come on here and let y'all know this. And if y'all like these types of videos, listen, this is me doing these videos. I'm holding myself accountable because I got to stop these crazy patterns that I'm in. But if I do happen to end up selling my feet pictures, which means that she done fixed my feet over there at the thing, then I'll let y'all know because I won't sell it to y'all for a, a large price. I mean, I'm gonna give y'all the, the homeboy discount of a dollar or two or something like that, but I'm gonna need everybody to buy the pictures of the feet then too. And then trust and, and believe, what we'll do is I'm gonna put y'all on to how to sell your feet pictures too, so that we can all get to come up because I guarantee you, if I think like this, I'm not the only person that think like this. And if you think like this, comment down below Below and let me know that I'm not the only crazy person in this relationship that we got going on here. Now, I'm gonna go and try to get my crazy together and I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video.